The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, has got more front than South End. He's playing the victim. One of the asylum seekers that Justin Welby's church reportedly vouched for tried to blow himself up surrounded by pregnant women and newborn babies in Liverpool. And he's the one who feels under threat, is he? Welby says that he's carrying a panic alarm. Where from? Well, the House of Lords to a chauffeur-driven car to an abbey, then to Lambeth Palace? Now, Welby may have presided over a dangerous conveyor belt of bogus asylum claims that has put every single one of us at risk. Obviously, he should never come to any harm himself, and I certainly hope he doesn't. But we should not take lectures in personal safety from a man whose organisation let at least one terrorist into Britain. The Church of England published a guide to clergy outlining to them how they could help asylum seekers beat the Home Office. Then one ex-vicar revealed that at his church there were Muslim men raking in bags of cash from other Muslim asylum seekers trying to stay in Britain. As soon as the baptism had taken place, the law firms were on the phone asking the vicars to vouch for them. Forty Bibby Stockholm migrants have apparently been baptised. There have been mass asylum seeker baptism in the sea. The vicar involved revealed most of them, and this is a shocking bit, <laughs> never bothered to go to church again after they had their passport. How many dangerous, violent, threatening terrorists have wandered into Britain using Welby's church as their welcome mat? The church initially distanced themselves from any wrongdoing, but the clock is ticking now for Welby, and he knows it. They have now launched an urgent review into their asylum seeker conveyor belt, and the real comeuppance is likely to come next week, when the Home Affairs Select Committee speaks to the vicar who exposed the asylum baptism scam. Justin Welby has said that MPs need to be more respectful to each other. This is the bloke who brought up the Nazis when referring to the Rwanda plan. Rise in international human rights law uh, grew out of the horrors of the 1940s where a government that in 1933 <laughs> in Germany had been legally and properly elected passed horrific laws that did terrible things. I can't help but wonder if this guy is just trying to drum up sympathy before the reckoning. Cry me a river, Archbishop. A river big enough that you could baptise a fake asylum seeker in it. Let's get the thoughts of my panel. It is former UKIP Deputy Chair and political commentator Suzanne Evans. We've got Conservative peer Lord Bailey and ex-Labour advisor Matthew Laza. Suzanne, I'll start with you. Is Welby just crying crocodile tears, do we think? Oh, my goodness, yes. I mean, you summed it up beautifully there, Patrick. You know, he lives in a palace. He works in a palace. He's scared. How does he think the rest of us feel facing this terror threat? Um, He's been a disaster for the Church of England, mm. I think, ever since he was appointed, really. You know, this week he's talking about uh, people talking about hate speech. You know, last week it was he wanted a billion pounds for reparations for the slave trade. Before that, mm. it was denying, as you said, the fact that the church was facilitating illegal migration through these fake conversions. Before that, he was opposing the illegal migration bill. Before that, he was talking about Brexit being xenophobic. Uh, let's not forget he shut the churches during COVID when most of us needed some spiritual support some yes. company. I think that was a shameful thing to do. He really doesn't speak for thousands of Church of England members like myself, who did vote Brexit, um, who think we're, we're facing a national emergency because of mm. the, the, the troubles and the, the risks that uncontrolled immigration is putting us through. And we don't think money we put in our collection plate should be going to a bunch of left-wing, anti-Christian, anti-British, uh, anti-slavery campaigners yeah. who've got this 200-year-old grievance. Well, serious question marks as to whether he's running a church or a woke lobby group, isn't Indeed. there? But, Sean, I I'll ask you, you know, he's saying that he's carrying a panic alarm. Has he not put us all at risk? I just, look, firstly, it's a real shame that he feels like he has to carry a panic mm -hmm. alarm, but Thank it just you. shows you that where we are now with our public discourse, we cannot have any kind of disagreement because you, if you're not with someone, apparently it's all right to attack someone. Mm. But he has to be very careful about using the words hate speech. I personally think the definition is far too wide. If you say something to me that I don't consider hate speech, then Matthew can, can consider hate speech and somehow you're in trouble. Mm. I think we need to do something about that. But the most important thing is, who gets to decide what's hate speech? This sounds Orwellian to me. He's saying we should be more civil to each other. And of course, that's true. But remember, he hasn't always been civil about the government. And if he, he needs to lead by example, you could always accuse politicians of needing to lead by example, but he probably has an even bigger example to lead by. But I go back to my point. 
Who gets to decide what is hateful or not? If our parliamentarians cannot talk about the tough things in life, the problems this country faces, we simply won't deal with them. Mm. And if someone could say we don't like that conversation, you get into the nonsense they're held on university campuses, safe space. Well, parliament isn't a safe space. Parliament is where we deal with all of the problems and challenges this country faces. Yeah, no, indeed. Matthew, I'll throw it to you on this one. I mean, Welby's been in hot water numerous times, whether it was... Yeah, was standing accused of covering up some very dodgy figures in the Church of England, whether or not it's over the latest slavery issues, whether or not it's presiding over an asylum seeker fake conveyor belt issue. Surely his head's on the chopping block at some point. Well, I think certainly his head's going to be on the chopping block, from, uh, 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 as Suzanne says, from a lot of ordinary members of the Church of England. Because, uh, uh, look, I, I, what I find slightly funny about this is, yes, look, you know, using hate speech to try and close down the debate, um, when actually I'd say that he takes a fairly extreme position uh, on the issue uh, himself. I don't frankly agree with uh, extremism on either side of the debate. I do think the debate could do with the, the, the tone going down and the substance going up, you know, the less hot air and, and more detail of how we, so we stop the boats and uh, uh, and smash the gangs and and make a real uh, change in, in migration in this country. Uh, but he, you know, I think it's a bit much for him to be on the one hand uh, calling out other people and then him being as, as harsh as he is. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd be much more prepared to listen to him if he was less absolute mm -hmm. in saying you know, and if he, and if the church wasn't issuing these these guides. So well, yeah. I'm you know, I'm I'm slightly you know, I, I'm prepared to listen, but at the moment he's putting me off. Yeah, okay. I mean, one of the things that really wound me up was. As a journalist, we were going to him when all of this conveyor belt issue was coming out. We were yeah. going to him repeatedly. I mean, I've got the emails here. We were going to the Church of England, and it was the same thing about, it's not our responsibility, it's the Home Office, washing their hands of it, washing their hands of it. And then, lo and behold, a couple of months later, we're going to have an urgent review. Well, we're going to have an urgent yeah. review into all of it. Mm. And you think, actually, hang on a minute, you know, there's got to be some accountability. Well, they're losing credibility, even with people who've never been inside a church, but who just, who do turn to the Church of England, you know, uh, as the national church. And instead, they're finding that they won't, they won't they won't uh, exactly. tackle it's their the complicity. It's national church. It's part of our government. It's part of our structure. It's but part we, of our We democracy. deserve to know. I'm sorry, but, but ordinary citizens walking around the streets, we deserve to know how many dangerous extremists the Church of England has allowed but, but, in. But, but in, in his defence, in the church's defence, the inquiry that they've called gives them an opportunity to answer that Question. Let's hope it does. And, and I, I hope they do, because they've got two roots here. They can be defensive and say, nothing to see over here, Gov, mm. and then people fill that void. Or they can say, actually, mistakes have been made, or we have a different thing planned, or, or we acknowledge some, or some of the problems we've had, and we're going to be part of solving them. That's a decision for him to make. But if he goes the wrong way, I feel he may put himself at the church. swear on the Bible, do you think, during the Home Affairs Select Committee? Swear on the Bible when he's asked these questions about, did you know that this stuff was going on? Because, you know, like I said, in the past, there's question marks as to whether or not he's been entirely truthful about what he did or didn't. I, I've got to say, uh, listen, the church I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm, I'm great friends with a man. We both sit in the laws. I see him regularly. Yeah. He you does, don't always get a hello, do you, Sean? No, I don't always get a hello. But I'd have to say he does not strike me as a dishonest man. I, I think we need to give him the benefit what, of that. What worries me? Interestingly, Sorry, some, some priests won't actually swear on the Bible, even if they're in a courtroom, on the basis that what they think is the truth might actually not be the truth. So I think mm. it might be interesting yeah. to see whether he'd refuse that or not. But for me, your comment about him being a a woke lobby group was brilliant. Why on earth doesn't he focus on spreading the gospel on the fundamentals of the Christian faith? Since Welby's been around, uh, you know, the Church of England has lost around 200,000 members. That's yeah. what he should And I think, I think what's interesting about, about, about his position is that it's not that it's left wing, it's, it's liberal with a very big L, and I think it'll be an yeah. equally big thorn in the side of a Labour well, government. This is, I mean, I just think this is so tone deaf. I, people, look over their shoulder a lot now when they're walking around. People feel less safe on the streets. People see things like the maternity... Uh, Patrick, I think people like want compassion. Bomber. People feel people see things like... Yeah. But they don't, want, they don't want the church to be taken for a ride. And I'd, I'd be much more prepared to listen to his compassion if they weren't being but, taken but, but, for a ride over this baptism issue. He isn't, he isn't displaying compassion. What he's displaying is a liberal view of the world. Let me, he let needs, me. If, he, if he was being a vicar mm. in, in, on, in, on the largest stage in the way that people expect a vicar to behave, he would suffer much less criticism. But he's being political, and if you're political, right. you face backlashes. I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to read out a statement from Welby now. So Mr Welby has said that he does not support open borders and agrees with the government that immigration should be cut. He says, there's a lot of what the government says, which I entirely agree with. The boats must be stopped. We must limit access to our borders. Three quarters of a million in any year seems to me to be far too many. As I said a couple of weeks ago, we entirely agree with the evidence. We just don't agree with the means and may well be wrong in that. That is, of course, after it emerged, he said anyway, that he carries 
a panic alarm with him. Do, do you think this is just a tactic to take the heat off him uh, ahead of uh, ahead of what we've got at this Home Affairs Select Committee season? I think it was a rather stupid thing for him to admit, actually. Um, I, it's so contradictory, isn't it? On the one hand, he's mm. trying to make up that we have to be accommodating to, to immigrants, we have to be accommodating to refugees, and I totally agree. Mm. Genuine refugees. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, but people who've been vetted and checked, yeah. and we know they're not coming here with evil intent. And then he's saying he carries a panic alarm. Seems to me he's contradicting himself. I think there. so. And Although, I think he needs to check his privilege, to yeah. use the, uh, to use the phrase. <laughs> I, I've, I've got to say... Is it I've that got, he's worried I, about a right-wing threat, maybe? I've got, I've got I've got to say, his, his statement is a reasonable place to be. There's many and many a pair who would agree with him. But the problem is, is in the context of Absolutely. all the other things he, he said. And the reason why, why, why the panic alarm may be a little bit tone deaf is because he hasn't understood the pressure that everybody else feels yeah. Yeah, 100%. under. And, and, and if he did, he may have... And all the MPs and when, peers who don't have a chauffeur driven people car. People feel panic when they see their tax bills. People feel panic when a migrant hotel is plonked down the road. From he wants them. to try people being Jewish. If you're Jewish in London, if you're Jewish in London, I, I dare say the whole That's country... panic. You feel real panic. I have a Jewish his friend, right, and I, and I just said to him, why don't you come to the West End to see me? And he, the, the phone just went quiet. Mm. Yeah. And he said, are you kidding, Sean? There's no part of me that will ever come to the well, West I'll End. I'll tell you what, a little bit later on, a little bit later on, I've got some absolutely shocking footage for you of essentially extremists uh, against Jews, but... Oh, anyway, I won't, I won't tell you everything. I'll have to show it to you. But it is remarkable now how white... Extremism is no longer a fringe issue. No. Yeah.